Hello, welcome to this episode of the Tim and Bob Borg Show. Anyway, uh, I want to do a video about how to charge an EV because there's a common misconception out there that EVs can only be charged at public EV charging or something and that they can't be charged at home. I know people who don't realise that you can charge them off a power plug. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can do that. Now, it's already set up, but I can unplug it and show you again. As you can see, this is my Nissan Leaf here. This is an electric car. It's actually the original electric car, but it's the second generation of it. Um, well, the first generation Nissan Leaf, which looks totally different, um, was um, the first mass-produced EV. Anyway, look at this. So, you know, these are the plugs. This is Nissan Leaf to have two plugs on them. Um, most EVs have two plugs, except the newer style, it looks like it's one plug sometimes. But it actually can be two different plugs. Um, <clears throat> so this is Type 1, which is com backward compatible with Type 2. Some of them have Type 2 on them, but it's just not this one because it's JDM. And that's Chidemo, which is the most advanced, best type of <laughs> public charging standard. Uh -huh -huh. That's not what people normally say, is it? Yep, yeah, no, nope, but I, that's what I think it is. Anyway. <sighs> okay, here's a point. You guys probably don't realise. This plug here is the same as what they use in China. In China, they don't use CCS, but they have their own version of Chidemo, and they don't call it Chidemo. But it's Chidemo, just without the proprietary so, um, software, right? It's just an open source version of it. The plug is identical. So these plugs are still mass produced in China and all Chinese EVs over there, their domestic market ones, have that plug on it. They just, they, they call it their own Chinese plug and I've just forgotten what the name of it was. But anyway, oh no, that's totally off topic. Okay, here we go. So this is the plug, I'm gonna unplug it. Even if my car's charging, it doesn't matter. So that's, that's what it looks like there. And this is what that side looks like. So you just plug it in like this, just push it in, and then the car beeps and it starts charging. And this car has power indicator lights so you know when it's charging or not charging, but, and you know roughly how much. And when it's fully charged, it'll stop blinking. All right, so we'll follow the cable. Where does it go? Cable goes over here, and I've got this device here. And this device is a multi-speed device. Let's try to get it to zoom in. There you go. So right now I'm doing slow charging since I'm trying to charge this car up to 100% because I've got a buyer taking the car and they will be driving it a long way home. So I've got to make sure it has enough charge for them. Um, and I'm a nice guy like that. So yeah, anyhow, <clears throat> it has three speeds, eight amps, 10 amps and 15 amps. So right now I've got it on the slowest one. And look at the light there that flashes. It looks like a Tesla logo. It's funny. Yeah. But it's... Um, this is a CCS... No, it's not. I mean, what am I saying? It's Type 1. That's what they call it. AC Type 1. And anyway, so then here's the cable for it. And it just goes here. And then there's an adapter. Because this one can do 15 amps. But I don't have a 15 amp plug here. So this adapter can adapt things from 10 amps to 15. All right, and there's no safety switch on it though, so you have to be careful. The only thing, you don't want to draw 15 amps from a socket that is only 10 amps because the socket there might actually catch on fire and you might have a house fi electrical fire that could spread to your car. And this has actually happened um, in this state in the last 12 months to somebody who owned a Nissan Leaf, funnily enough. And they also were using an aftermarket charger. And they said it was a dodgy adapter and that was what the reason of the fire was. So dodgy adapter must have been more dodgy than this one but still i've looked on ebay yes you can buy ones just like this uh that are just a cable they've got no safety but they've got ones for like 60 dollars where you get a um safety switch in it and it looks different anyway it's more like a manufactured device like an adapt power and adapter thing uh, it's actually orange like that uh, anyway but so you just plug it in plug it in anywhere i can use 10 meter 20 meter extension cord on it if I have to. So even a house that doesn't have an external power plug, you can just run the power cord out the window or out the front door or something like that, you know? 
Um, a lot of people who live in apartments think they can't charge their EV, but actually they can, and all they have to do is use an extension cord on one of these. Uh, so it's a big myth that a lot of them are just like, oh, I, I, I live in flats, I can't get an EV, so I'll just keep buying petrol forever. Well, no, that's not actually a good enough excuse, especially if you own the flat. If you own the flat, you can talk to your body corporate, and then you could actually have uh, a permanent plug installed, you know, uh, or a, uh, a faster type of home charging. There are faster types, and people who have talked about getting home chargers installed, they're talking about getting a faster type that far, charges faster than 15 amps and um, so that's the whole reason for that um, you know you can get like this plug here on this card only supports up to 3.5 uh, kilowatts an hour which is what 15 amps is right now it will be charging at 2.2 or 2.4 something like that yeah um, kilowatt hours is the speed that you can charge from home and this car with its this Nissan Leaf here it's a 2018 JDM 40 kilowatt uh, Leaf here it it can charge up in about eight hours or something you know from whatever low state very low state to 100% or 80% enough for you to check, drive anywhere on and um, in this winter weather right now on a full charge it gets about 245 kilometer range but it could if I drive it super heavy foot though and have the heaters on all the time that's why it's so bad all the time but um, even the heat, heated seats and the steering wheel use power um, so sometimes I use all three types of heating though because I'm really temperature sensitive and cold all the time <laughs> and I love the steering wheel heater but anyway off topic I don't want the CDS going for longer than I wanted all right I just wanted to do a quick one about just this dispelling this myth I'm going to do a, a more in-depth review of this car in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe for more and watch my next one. Cheers. Live long and prosper. Resistance is futile and you'll be assimilated.